you ever look around and see everybody serving God with their talents and you're like, what's mine? How can I serve God? How can I glorify him each and every day? Well, I've been there and so has my guest, Luke Murdoch, and he's doing something really awesome. He's actually using his passion for music to glorify God. And that's actually what he wants to do for the rest of his life. Sit back and be inspired for a story of God's faithfulness. Thank you for joining us, Luke. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And thank you for being here. We actually ran into each other at Starbucks. Yeah. And turns out I know his mom and I was like, I know him. <laughs> so I'm really happy that you could be with us today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Well, uh, I, I interviewed your mom a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and she actually shared her story and she was also a faith TV show mm -hmm. host as well. What was it like growing up with a mom and a dad who were very much involved in the church? Yeah, so um, having parents like that for me was like everything we did like revolved around our faith. Like I would ask my mom something and she would somehow ask me how that tied into faith or something at school asked me how I could be Jesus to that person at school, even when I was like, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh grade. She was asking me like, what could you do to help that person find Jesus? Um, and even, you know, things like uh, Halloween, she'd be like, you know, make sure it's uh, within the, your costume is in, within the uh, realm of, you know. Like no devil costume. Yeah, 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 I exactly. Get it. Yes. Um, but like, I look back and I'm so thankful for the way my mom and my dad like raised me to have this strong faith, faith and to rely on God like the way I do now. And because if I didn't, I would be in like this, like, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I've struggled with like trying to do things by myself for most of my life, but it would be a lot worse if I didn't have parents that loved me and cared for me so much mm -hmm. to push me that far and to make sure that I was always being my very best and helping me be my very best. You always you always hear stories of people who have grown up in a family who serves God and who loves God, and the children kind of go on a different path. Mm -hmm. How have you kind of prevented yourself from going off that path and stay on the straight and narrow? Yeah, so to be honest, part of that is just by God's amazing grace and His glory, because ever since we became Christians when I was about six and a half, uh, I was always like enamored by this thought, this idea of a God that loved me so unconditionally. And like, I would look forward to coming to church every day and learning about Jesus and how, and what he did for me. And like, even like, like listening to worship songs when I was seven or eight would touch me so much because mm -hmm. I was like, wow, God loves me so much. Um, and just like, it's just stuff like that, like that just, uh, God like just put that in my heart to stay with him. Cause like, I've heard stories of people, like you say, who like go on their own path. And I just think to myself, even when I like had that idea cross my mind, it made me uncomfortable thinking about leaving God because it was like I grew up with relying on him for, you know, to get through the day. So what is it like seeing people around you who may not believe the same way that you do or who haven't had the amazing experience of knowing God as you have? I, I really my heart goes out to those people because like even like adults who, you know, you know, they're 50s, 60s, you know, even like 70s and 80s, like they talk and they just talk about like how they felt like they had to do things on their own or how they did things on their own. And I'm thinking to myself, it would be so, your life would be uh, so much like, like better. Like life would be so much happier and easier if like you had that God to rely on. And like my friends at school who aren't Christians, they tell me about how like stressful things are and like, it just makes me want to tell them even more like, well, you know, there's a God that is there and wants to help you. Um, and I know that people have had experiences in life where they may not really want to be a Christian or be involved in that. But like, they just have to think about like, if you just like fall into him and trust him, like he'll like bless you and stuff. And, but they, but like they don't because of like their life circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I just like really pray for those people, like as much as I can, because I really want them to have like the same, joy that I have in my faith. Even as a Christian though, life isn't always easy. No, it's not. Jesus never promised us it would be easy. How do you deal with those the circumstances that you were just talking about, how everyday people get stressed about it and it really bothers them, but how do you navigate those yeah. waters in your own life? So the key is like really pressing into God and the key is really like making sure that that's the time that you rely on him the most. It's like, it's like when, like when you're at the gym and you're working out 
f the, the five pound weights, those are easy. You can do that pretty much by yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe after a while of doing it, like, or like with a 10 or like a 10 pound, it might get like a little bit heavier, might need like some help. But when you're trying to do, you know, deadlifts or bench press, you're going to need a spotter there to help you. You need somebody there who's going to help you so you can get even better at what you're trying to do. And I that's love like, that analogy. Yeah. And that's like, God, you know, like that time, like when you like need it the most and when life is like at its hardest, that's when you really need to rely on him because that's like when your face shows, like that's when your truth face shows. Like the Bible says. It's a test. Yeah, it's a test. Exactly. And your character isn't shown by what's in the light, but by what's in the dark. Mm hmm. Exactly. And how do you show your faith to those at school? Because being a Christian on a public school campus can be very difficult. Yeah. How do you manage that? It is very difficult sometimes. And I just like, a lot of it is just thinking to myself, what could I say in that situation to like, what, what's the best thing I could say in that situation? What's the best thing I could do in that situation? And I'm going to be honest with you, like, sometimes I forget to do that. Like, sometimes I say something like, should I really have said that? We or, all do. Yeah. We all do, Luke. Uh, <laughs> But, like, I think about it, I'm like, that would be a perfect opportunity to apply this into, like, this about God in that situation um, or talk about this or how that might help them. And what about putting God first? Because you have tons of homework. I know I do. How do you put God first in your everyday life as being a full-time student? Yeah, well, um, so, like, I live an hour away from my school, so I have to get up extra, you know, extra early uh, earlier than the rest You're of the students my at my boat. school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not fun. <laughs> no, it's not. And so, and a lot of the time, and I, I, I struggle with this sometimes, you know, because like I'm human, like I make mistakes, but a lot of time I try to get up just 10 minutes earlier, just like what's 10 minutes going to do, you know, mm -hmm. that's like, it's nothing compared to how early I already have to get up. And I just like sit down with some coffee and uh, my Bible and just read. And that just like sets me up for the day. That gives me like my spiritual energy like for the day. And like when I don't do it for a couple of days, I start to feel that draining feeling like from pouring into people and like pouring charge into just battery. life. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need to charge my batteries. Exactly. So like the really key is just like finding time, like the quiet time to find a way to worship. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Bible. It could be like listening to worship music or mm -hmm. writing poems about God or um, listening to a sermon. It doesn't necessarily have to be like reading, just something that you can get into like your everyday life about God that helps strengthen you. I don't know about your commute, but my commute is also just as long as yours. And I, so I'm stuck in a car by myself. I don't know if you're stuck in a car by yourself, but I usually am and it's dark and nobody's with me. And I usually either listen to worship music and sing my little heart out, or I listen to audio books. I even have the whole Bible on DVD. Wow. I know. Wow. So that's how I occupy my time because I got so sick and tired of just listening to, sometimes I'll listen to Caleb and everyone and things like yeah. that. But when you just sit in silence or you're listening to like the same mainstream songs, I just, I like to use that time and use it wisely, right? How do you use your commute? Yeah. So uh, I have, I don't have my license yet. I have my permit. And so my dad drives me to school every single day. And a lot of time we either listen to like a, like a radio station, like mm -hmm. or a radio talk show or we just talk and like, or if we're not talking, I'm just sitting in silence thinking about the day ahead of me, the, the classes I have, the work I'm gonna need to do in that class, my friends. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time I'll even catch myself like thinking about like months or even like years into the future. So really it's just like that morning for me, that morning drive, that hour long drive is just really a, a good time for me to just like set up my day post Bible time to like figure out what I wanna do and figure out how it's gonna go. Do you ever feel out of place when you're at school? Like all the you time. don't belong? Yeah, it's really different being a Christian, like seeing all these things that like people do at my school because like people like talk about like drugs or they talk about certain things. And I'm like, I've never had any experience with that. Mm -hmm. um, or like they just talk about certain things. And I'm like, I'm so thankful I don't have to deal with that. Like that God has blessed me enough to where I don't have to deal with that. Like sometimes I get mad at my family. At least I don't have like those same, like, my issues are nothing compared to what some of the, the things that my fellow classmates and students deal with at, at, at their homes. Um, and it just, like, really makes me think about, like, how special, like, Christians are in the world and what their job really is. Because even though I feel different, it reminds me that I'm supposed to be different. Exactly. Amen, Luke. You said it. You said it. How do you stand out, though? Like, like what are you doing on campus to make sure that not only do you feel a little uncomfortable, but you're also making it so you're a light in that darkness, as we're called um, to be. So this helps, but naturally I've always been like an empathetic person. Like I'll see when somebody's having a hard time and I'll just like connect with them. Even if I haven't 
specifically dealt with what they're what, what they're dealing with, I still feel that like some of that pain that they have, and so I I tell them you know like you can trust me and like I'm here for you because I ca even though I don't maybe don't know you very well, I still care a lot about you and I want to mm -hmm. help you. And so when people hear that, you know, they open up and they, they do that. And then people say, well, why are you so nice to me? It's like, well, not only that I care about you, but it's my duty as a Christian to mm -hmm. be the light and to help others. And show God's love. Yeah. Yeah. And with your guitar, it's not just sitting on set for no apparent reason. There's a purpose for it. <laughs> How long have you been playing guitar? Uh, four years. Okay. Four years. You got me beat by four years. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> what inspired you to start playing? So my family has always been musical. Like my brother plays guitar, my uncle plays everything. Literally, you name it, he can play it. My dad plays bass, um, and everybody on both sides of my family play an instrument. So it's a Murdoch thing. Yeah, it's just a Murdoch thing. And like my mom's family, the Wickham family, like that's also something that they do is like just instruments all over. And so I remember like when I was like four or five and six, just like sitting outside in a at a family reunion or family get together and they'd just be playing the guitars and like playing the like the the box drum or like and just singing like old songs um like stuff by like Led Zeppelin and uh, Neil Young and stuff like that That's and so awesome. yeah and i just like love that music and i love those like times with my family and like i remember when i was little when we'd be listening to some of our favorite bands i would be like playing like imaginary scenarios in my head like to the song and like that always made me so happy and just like music is always something that enamored me and like, like I said earlier, when I was like six, seven, and eight, worship music like always like had a thing with me, and I was like, that is those lyrics are so beautiful, like the way that music is written is so beautiful. And then around the time I was like eleven and eleven, twelve, I saw my sister trying to learn. I was like, okay, now I have to learn to play yeah, guitar. Yeah, you're like, okay, I could jump on this Murdoch train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I just like. I was like, wow, this is a lot harder than I thought, but I was like, no, I'm going to do this because it's really fun and I want to be really good someday. And I'm getting to the point where, like, because when I was, uh, when I was, like, younger and first learning, I was like, in three months I'm going to be just, like, slash, or I'm going to, like, and I was like, okay, that takes a little bit of practice, a couple years. Hard work. Yeah, and I'm still, like, getting there, but, like, I'm, like, I look back and I'm like, I'm so, like, proud of myself for, like, the work that I put in and, like, how good I've become at it. And that hard work's paying off because you're able to glorify God through that. Yeah, exactly. And what's your intention behind learning how to play guitar and and, and using your gift? Um, well, just behind the, the secular part, just learning the guitar is, like, I just love, like, I've always had, like, that performer mentality. Like, I was in plays when I was little, and I've been in plays my whole life. I've always been, like, a good, like, public speaker and like I've always loved clearly like, you're on here yeah. he did not pass up the opportunity <laughs> <laughs> and so just like just like playing and performing and entertaining people is just something, something that always like appealed to me and then the part where serving God is like I want to help people the best way I can and I know that a lot of people feel the same way I do where just music just does something to them and I know there's a difference between listening to a great sermon and listening to a great worship set mm, mm -hmm. and yeah when you have yep. both of those things it really hits you and so I just like I've always wanted to be that person that helped make that happen for somebody. Hmm. And you're actually going to do that right here on yeah. Sada Shasta's Journey. He actually prepared one of my favorite songs. I gave him two options, and he, he picked the one that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so continue to watch. Are you ready, Luke? Yes. All right. We're going to have him take a sip of his water first. All right. So what, what song are you playing? No Longer Slaves by Bethel Music. Perfect.
I, just, I wish much. we had a studio audience and had like everybody clapping because <laughs> okay. I'll clap for everybody. My necklace actually says, I am a child of God. And I was just going, yes. Oh, wow, it yes, does. Yes. I love that. What does that song mean to you, Luke? So my whole life, I've struggled with anxiety. I've struggled with fear and I've struggled with doubting God. And I've always like had this problem with overthinking things, even like before the, like when I was just waiting, like waiting for the show to start, I was overthinking like, what if I throw up on stage? <laughs> like, oh what if I pass out for no reason? Like, I just had that thought in my head, like, just totally unrealistic things. And the devil knew that that was a way he could get at me because I care a lot about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And he was like, something's going to happen to your family. Something's going to happen to your sister. Something's going to happen to your friends. Something's going to happen at school. Um, your teacher's going to fail you for no reason. Like, even, like, when my parents would, like, like, stay, like, an extra hour after work, I would be, like, freaking out, like, oh, my gosh, they got in a car accident. Like, something happened. Like, and that mm -hmm. was, like, always something that, like, had like an effect on me and that like changed a lot of the way I thought and it hindered me from doing a lot of things. It even hindered me from playing guitar sometimes. I would be like too anxious to play guitar. Like I just can't do that right now. Like I need to put that away. I need to like just focus on being worried. And that was just something that wasn't good for me. And that song, when I heard it for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, he won the fight for me. I don't have to fight it anymore because he won for me. Like I don't have to worry about what's going to happen because the doors that he opens stay open and the doors that he closes stay closed. So I don't have to worry about that because what he wants to happen is going to happen no it's matter done. what. Yeah, it's done. It's done. Exactly. I was just thinking about that this morning. I also struggle with anxiety. I struggle with overthinking. Just like you, I'm about to head on a plane to Nashville, right? And yeah. I have so many fears going 2,000 miles away from where I live, away from family, by uh -huh. myself taking Uber and Lyft for the first time, staying <laughs> yeah. at a hotel by myself, and I am internally freaking out. I'm excited, but freaking out. And that song just reminds me that we are no longer slaves to fear. Yeah. And, and that's obviously the name of the song, but really we don't have to live in that bondage anymore. Yeah, and like, I, 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 I base a lot of the songs off of like scriptures that I hear, like John 8, 36 says who the sun sets free is free indeed and like that passage for me even like the song who you say I am when it says who the sun sets free is free indeed I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am I cry like every time I hear those lyrics because it's like I'm free from everything that the devil throws at me from temptations to anxiety to uh fear to doubt to depression anything it's like I'm free from that like I don't have to worry about that anymore because Jesus died on the cross for that so what else has God freed you from? Um, he has freed me from worrying about other people's opinion of me. That is something that I struggle with even more than anxiety. And the, those two things went hand in hand. At this, people pleasing. Yeah, people mm. pleasing. Exactly. I would try to do things to fit in, change the way I talk, uh, change the way I dress, change the way I act, um, change just who I am as a person. It's just so to, easy yeah, to do just exactly. to fit in and feel accepted. Yeah, but like, and I never realized that those people don't care either way. It's like my dad always taught me like on late night drives when I would be in trouble at school for doing something to fit in, he would tell me, you have two paths. You can do what everybody else is doing or you can take the road less traveled. And he says, people don't care about you until you show that you care about them. And even then they still might not even care. And it's like, that's something that's out of my control. And that took me a long time to learn. And I'm still learning how to do that. Like I'm a lot better than I was 10 months ago, but like, cause like 10 months ago I would be one day I would say, I'm a Christian, I stand by what I believe, I would be public about that, but then the next day I would, I would completely just like do the opposite of that and like forget that I was even a Christian just so I could fit in with people. And I struggled with that because in the fourth grade I was homeschooled and then going into fifth grade at a public school mm -hmm. again, it was a not very, um, it was- It wasn't it, sheltering yeah, anymore. It, yeah, it wasn't, shel it, was, it wasn't sheltering me anymore, exactly. And just the things that like went on that school hit me really hard and I, like wasn't ready for it especially since like uh i have a late birthday so i was like i was younger than everybody else and like mm -hmm. i wasn't like there yet and all these things that people had dealt with i had never dealt with before so i was trying to come in to the game not like knowing the game plan or not knowing the defense like not knowing who our opponent was or who my opponent was and that was all Satan. of these analogies i am loving <laughs> thank you <laughs> i need to pick up on some of these <laughs> um and like i would just try so hard to like make people want like make people want me and make people like me and like make people love me the way I love them. And I would lay awake at night thinking, how can I make that person like me? Mm. I know, Luke, that you are not alone. So many people struggle with that, including me. But what advice do you have for people who are going through that right now, whether they are Christian or aren't Christian? There is hope for that person. There is hope for you. There is hope for your future because 
Jesus gave it all for you, despite whether you believe in Jesus or not. He did. And I guarantee you, if you just try, if you just try it, just for a little bit, you'll see something. And those people, like in uh, Ecclesiastes in the Bible, it talks about everything under the sun is meaningless. Mm. And uh, it says that everything under the sun, work, everything you gain in life, everything you have, it's all going to be wiped away. It's None of it's here forever. The only thing that's here forever is God. Truth. And so all these people that don't care about you, that don't treat you well, they're all going to fade away. Like, obviously, you need to be nice to them and be, like, be a Christian to them. Or just, even if you're not a Christian, just be nice to them in general. But they're, all, they're not going to be here in 20 years. They're not going to be here in 10 years, you know? It's like, you don't have to deal with that forever. Like, that's just one part. That's just temporary. character building. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's temporary. temporary. That's just character building for the real challenges ahead, even, like, especially for Christians. Like, the real challenges, like, being a Christian, like, the workplace, uh, school, just, like, in family life, like, those are just the those are just the steps that are training you for what's ahead. And you're about to step out of a milestone in your life that you've been in for quite some time. Mm-hmm. You are almost about to graduate, correct? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a junior in high school, and uh, so close. Yeah, um, and this is actually from the time I was in sixth grade to the time I was in tenth grade. I was in a private Christian school. It was a great school. Um, they treated me really well, and they cared a lot about the students. And they really made sure that, like, students, like, knew what they were being taught. And, like, Mm -hmm. and I'm really thankful for that. And they really make sure that Christians are in a good, or just not Christians, that people are in a good Christian environment. Um, Even, like, people who went there occasionally, very rarely, who weren't Christians, even said that they had a good time there Mm -hmm. um, and learned something from it. And so, like, that was good for me to be there because for for the problems that I had, like, trying to please people, trying to do all these things and not for a long time, like, not, like, being, like, really in God's word and like not like really like walking for Christ and trying to do it by myself I would have done a lot of stupid things if I was in public school but being in that private school was like a good way for me to like ready mentally like mentally ready myself for public school and now that I'm in public school again it's like it's all coming back to me from like except you know it's 10 times more because it's high school not fifth grade exactly yeah and uh it's just a really big leap between being in that sheltered Christian environment to being in an environment where Christians aren't welcome. And how are you preparing for your future? I don't like getting asked this question. I'm sure you don't either. But what do you want to do after high school? So I obviously want to do something in music. I want to be a worship leader or a pastor just somewhere at a church. Um, I plan on learning like at least 10 instruments. I already have like four, I already have like four down. So like four down. What do you have down? Uh, Guitar. My voice. Okay. I'm learning piano. Yes, voice is definitely one. Okay. I'm learning piano, and I play the saxophone. I tried playing flute for like a couple of days, and that goes well. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Like, what other um, instruments you want to learn? Drums, drums, and I want to learn. You could pull it off, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and I want to learn violin and cello. Like, I just love those instruments so much. I want to learn them so bad. Wow, I, I I can picture you with some sort of contraption that has all the instruments on it. <laughs> 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 that would be pretty funny. Actually, your whole family should have a like um I don't know, the the Murdoch family tour or something you guys should all tour and sing. That'd it's funny be awesome. you should say that. My mom and my dad are in the midst right now of creating this ministry that they feel like God has for them to do and uh called Rise and Rejoice Ministries and everything they told me is just so so brilliant and so like accurate uh biblically accurate and it um I'm just so proud of my parents for how they're working past problems that problems that they've had in the past and uh, their own like things that they have and working towards the betterment of that ministry that they're trying to build and it's actually like growing and um, I'm really proud of them for that and I uh, sorry I lost my train of thought it's for a okay. second. They are yeah. both such a blessing. Yeah, I know they've been a blessing in my life and, and just seeing how they raised somebody like yourself. I hope that one day when I'm a mom, I can, you know, have a son that glorifies God just as you have. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's really amazing. We only have a few minutes left, okay. but what other advice do you have for people, especially youth? Okay, because I know how difficult it was in middle school and high school, and I'm sure it's even worse now. Um, yeah. How do they go about navigating their walk of life, whether they have been a Christian their whole life, like yourself, or if they're just stepping into that?
don't worry like I did. Don't, don't worry about trivial things like the, what people care about you or how you dress or how you look because it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is walking with Christ and growing in that because when you grow in that, he's going to bless you more than He's going to bless you more than what you feel like you already have. Like it says in the Bible, the people who lost their friends and family and lost their lives for mm -hmm. Christ will gain a hundred times more than what they had on earth. And, and they'll gain that in heaven. And so it's like, if you just keep your eyes on Jesus and you think about the fact that he already has it all under control and you don't have to worry about it, then everything's already set in place. You just have to, like the door's already open, you just have to walk through it. But you have to take the time to grow in your relationship with God to get there, to walk up the steps, to get to that door. Um, and trust me, he's waiting. He's waiting for you because, you know, life isn't a destination. It's it's a journey. And, like, your show Shasta's journey. It is. It's a journey. Yeah. It is. Um, and don't be afraid to just be a Christian because th the people who just totally shut it out and don't want, like, there's a, Bible, there's a Bible verse, I think, in Matthew, and it says, don't waste your time with people who don't want to hear it anyway. And I, I usually highlight things. I circled that in pen mm -hmm. and highlighted it to make sure that I remember that. Don't waste your time with people who aren't going to listen anyway. Like, obviously, you want to be like the light to people and stuff like that. But if they're just completely shut out from God, there's no point. And so don't worry about like, how those people feel or how they're going to treat you. And despite what you've gone through, you're still worthy of God's love. You're still worthy of his grace. His grace is unending. Mm -hmm. And uh, like even myself, like I... Um, Sometimes I would, like, kind of try and hide from God like uh, Jonah did because I was afraid of, like, how God felt about me because of my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Then he had to teach me and show me that I love you anyway. And the mistakes you made have already been paid for. And it's a good chance to learn from it, not to dwell in it. So the advice I have for other youth is to be who you are and don't worry about what you've done or what other people think or what you will do. Just worry about the now and worry about your relationship with Christ. Such wise words, Luke. Thank you so much for sharing your story on Shasta's journey. And I'm me. very grateful that I ran into you at Starbucks. <laughs> you know, God brings people in our life for a purpose. Why don't you thank the people around you? Go to Shasta'sJourney.com, share your testimony. We'd love to hear how God is moving and working in your life. Follow Shasta's Journey on Instagram and Facebook for a daily inspiration. And I hope you were blessed by Luke, just like I was. God bless.